Hi, this is SC Linux Administration uh, Training Session 10. Session 10 is about users, uh, user and role security. We know that in SC Linux we have a concept of user and role. So how that concept of user and role works and uh, how multi-category security works. In this session we will talk about all those aspects. So the agenda of the session is role based access control that is RBAC commonly used term is RBAC then multi category security that is MCS multi security multi category security uh, where we will understand translation and login because uh, there is a slightly difference here we need to understand that normal Linux users and SC Linux users there has to be a mapping we don't have uh, you know uh, a user for every normal user we don't have SC Linux corresponding user there's a mapping so we have few SE Linux users or logins rather uh, user is probably not the right word logins SC Linux logins and we have the uh, normal users and normal logins and we map them so translation happen so what is that translation and what is that login understand that then chcat that is change file security category so mcs as i talked about mcs multi category security so how to change the category of a, a file and defining as security administrator sudo chcat and root so this is the broadly the agenda of the session we'll learn a lot of new things probably uh, we don't implement MCS but in case just in case we use MCS because we use targeted policy we don't use MCS uh, policy and uh, uh, generally it is not installed also but if you want to install it and you want to use it you can use MCS also multi category security so starting with S E Linux users users in Linux are generally associated with human users as I said, uh, there's a mapping, there's a separate concept of users in SC Linux. And we have uh, SC Linux users and we create a mapping. So users in Linux are generally associated to human users or Linux users or operator function or system function. While this can be implemented in SC Linux, SC Linux usernames are generally groups or classes of users as I said we don't have a one-to-one -one correspondence we don't have a uh, one SC Linux for every normal user every human user no uh, generally SC Linux users are kind of classes there's one special Linux SC Linux user defined that must never be associated to a Linux user if uh, as it is a special identity for system processes and object and this user is system underscore u I repeat system underscore u so this is SC Linux user this is not human user and this user of SC Linux is associated with system processes and object the identity this is a special identity for SC Linux so that means when we are running any processes when we are uh, running system processes to be precise and uh, or system objects then they are owned by in terms of SC Linux they are owned by a special SC Linux user and that user is system underscore u or system user so that mapping is always there uh, silently uh, invisible mapping we never use this we never bother about what is the context or what is the username for this process but there is SC Linux user behind the screen and this l user must not be mapped to any human user because this is only for the uh, SC Linux um, uh, you know system processes and objects so this identity is for them so system underscore u role-based access control RBAC to further control access to type enforcement domain that is TE domains SC Linux make use of role-based access control that is RBAC this feature allows s linux users to be associated 
to one or more roles which wherein each role is then associated to one or more domain types sc linux role name is second component of security context or the label when we write it and by convention sc linux role and with underscore r if you remember the first one is the user which is uh, which end with underscore u and second is underscore r however this is not enforced by s any sc linux service that is it is only used to identify the role component so this is how it works when we say sc linux user we have unconfined user unconfined user basically as i said is not confined not controlled is free man free bird so nothing is controlled no policy uh, no security so if the basic in the basic policy sc linux user unconfined u is associated to all gnu linux users by default so by default every user is under unconfined user then we have a role unconfined role and unconfined t so if we have unconfined user unconfined role with unconfined role and with unconfined t that means that process is actually not controlled by sc linux so the domain include most processes started at boot time and logins and they are not controlled and they are not protected by sc linux and we require such processes because this this processes are uh, which start at boot time and logins because you they if you put them uh, under control if you put them under security your system will not start so we have to leave some unguarded processes and unguarded pro uh, you know programs and those comes under unconfined user unconfined role unconfined uh, type enforcement t so this is the uh boot time login and boot time processes this is for that point number 1 second if you go into message filter t the uh, another way uh, this is another set of role so message filter t and then under that we have for example ext gateway t or integer gateway t or mv file t there are so many type enforcement domain under message filter now these domains are entered from the unconfined t domain by performing domain transitions using sc linux facilities this can be done because unconfined user is associated with the role unconfined r and message filter t within the policy so this is another uh, uh, definement so basically we need to understand how they are organized which pass uh, which type enforcement domain comes under which role and uh, what is the hierarchical uh, you know placement of that type enforcement so this gives you a broader idea that we have different categories of type enforcement under different roles and uh, under different users as we remember that uh, broader picture i i uh, i hope you recollect that we started with a user controlled by role then controlled by type enforcement and then actual file which is protected we discussed that file protected by this this kind of picture i i explained in one of my session so i hope you recollect that and this is same thing user role then type enforcement in a true rbac situation people are assigned one or more roles which grant or deny particular access in an rbac model there are couple of important aspects to have in an implementation such as permissions are always granted through roles permissions are always granted through roles and no direct assignment or no direct assignation to the users and users must be explicitly granted roles no role means no rights 
if you don't grant any role to the user that means no rights to the user there are uh, different aspects to look at this is one is permissions are always granted through roles means uh, without role we cannot have permissions roles are uh, permissions are granted to roles roles are granted to users so a user without a role will not have permission it means simple it simply means that on a linux system one can make most if not all of its behavior based on role assignment done through group membership and group privileges that is the reason we talk about the sc linux user groups and the membership to the groups same way here we have the roles so we assign members we assign user to the roles so role based access control and this is how it works let's say for example user 1 all right user1 is assigned to user underscore u and uh, under that we have a role called user underscore role that means this user will acquire this role and this role means having these applications access to these applications these are all app one multiple applications app one context app one type of enforcement app two type enforcement so we have multiple type enforcements here so this is a user so one user will have a one user sc linux user user r that is sc linux role and the role have multiple permissions permissions on multiple objects we have another user user 2 may have a, let's say staff mapped to staff user in sc linux these are sc linux users these are all sc linux users mapping as I said normal users that is Linux users these are Linux users and these are SC Linux users so user 2 staff user mapped to staff role and having some X number of applications or uh, contexts now this staff user may be mapped to another uh, user also another role also let's say sysadmin role because one user can have multiple roles so nobody stops that okay then sysadmin R this role have access to some applications from in this pool and maybe another another role we may assign another new role to this so this staff user uh, which is uh, this particular human user may have access to uh, maybe mapped to this staff user maybe mapped to this role and mapped to having access to this type enforcement new role T other way around this user may have uh, uh, mapping to staff user may be mapped to staff role and then may have access to these type of enforcements same way so this is a mechanism where we are mapping human users to sc linux users and each of these sc linux users are mapped to corresponding roles and the role have access to the type enforcements same way another user user 3 may be enforced you know mapped to staff user and then map to this user uh, this role sysadmin role and having access to uh, as he managed type enforcement or new role so new type enforcement uh, so this depends on the mapping how the mappings are done so these are as I said these users are normal Linux users when we create so we call them as Linux accounts this is a category uh, as I said there is not never one to one mapping but a kind of group of uh, by convention they are uh, groups so uh, a role I would say so user you staff you member you system you there are system user or SC Linux users we call them as SC Linux users then we have SC Linux roles these are SC Linux roles these are SC Linux roles and we have SC Linux domains that is the application domains or pool of applications controlled by SC Linux and so this is a role based access control we assign role to users and we assign that user to Linux user so this is a role based access we are talking about controlling the access to these type enforcements or applications through these roles by mapping these roles to SC Linux users and uh, mapping uh, Linux users to corresponding SC Linux users so this is mapping has to be clear we need to understand that first so this is role based access control how normal Linux users are given SC Linux users mapping 
how SC Linux users are mapped to system roles, SC Linux roles to be honest, and then how these roles are mapped to SC Linux domains or type enforcements. So a user is mapped to SC Linux user, which defines the maximum clearance of that user. The SC Linux user is allowed one or more roles, effectively restricting which role a particular user can participate in or segregation of duties. Then number three, roles are allowed certain domains or runtime privileges for one or more applications. So it is through the domain permission that privileges of a user are controlled. Consider the privileges to administer the web server. A role that does not allow a domain with these privileges will not have the ability to run the necessary applications effectively restricting the ability of a user to administrate the web server. And that is the concept. And I'm sure this role based access control is, is clear now. Assigning roles to users now. We need to now learn how to assign these roles, how to create new roles, how to uh, map our own applications to the roles and how to implement it manually. That is, we need to understand that now. Because a role depends on SC Linux user and particular Linux user is mapped to SC Linux user. I always have been talking about this, the a Linux user in this session, I've been emphasizing on it. A Linux user is mapped to SC Linux user. Assigning role begin with the mapping of Linux user to SC Linux user. So we need to start mapping the normal Linux user to SC Linux user. This mapping first needs to be done. As SC Linux users are immutable, it is important to differentiate based on the role requirements. For example, if two users have different role requirements, user one needs role A and role B, user two needs role B and role C, then they should be map, not mapped to the same SC Linux user as this would mean that those users can access a role which they are not allowed to. All right. Repeat. We can just take a look at this sentence once more. If two users have different role requirements, like uh, user one require role A, and role, role A and role B, and user two require role B and role C, then we cannot map them to the same SC Linux user because their, their requirements are not same. They are different. So if we assign them, if we, for example, if we map user A and user B, both of them to role B, uh, definitely that would mean that uh, they are accessing a role which they are not supposed to, which they are not allowed to. So we should map these users to different SC Linux users because their requirements are different. They are not same. This user require two roles but these two roles are different from the roles required by user B. So user 1 and user 2 should never be assigned to the same role or same user, same user I would say, same SC Linux user because their requirements are different. If you do that, that would mean that these users can access a role which they are not allowed to, they are not supposed to. So we may need to create our own SC Linux user for that purpose or role for that purpose. By default, these are the roles, default roles. For example, user underscore R, this role. This basically is end user role meant to be assigned to users with interactive logon privileges to the system, but without additional role requirements. Staff role, end user role meant to assign to users who also need to transition to other roles. The staff role by itself is not much more privileged than user R, except that it is allowed to do the role transitions. So role transition happens with staff R, not with user R. System admin R, powerful role for generic system administration. System underscore R, system role means for demons and system privileges and object R is assign unassigned role meant for resources rather than the domains. 
so these are default roles in SE Linux uh, SE Linux roles we are talking about context SE Linux context processes and files are labeled with SE Linux context that contain information such as an SE Linux user role type and optionally a level mind it level is optional when running SC Linux, all of this information is used to make access control decisions. In RHEL, SC Linux provides a combination of RBAC, type enforcement and optionally MLS, multi-level security. So that is context. Let's start with SC Linux user now. SC Linux user identify identity is an identity known to the policy that is authorized for a specific set of roles and for a specific MLS or MCS range. Each Linux user is mapped to an SC Linux user via policy. I told you that each Linux user is mapped to SC Linux user. This allow Linux user to inherit the restrictions placed on SC Linux users. The mapped SC Linux user identity is used in the SC Linux context for processes in that session. In order to define what role and level they can enter. To view the list of mapping between the SC Linux users and Linux users which is provided by policy core utils hyphen python rpm we can use sc manage login hyphen l and the mls mcs range column is a level used by multi-level security and multi-category security this service column determines the correct sc linux context in which the linux user is mapped supposed to be logged into the system so let's take a look at this uh, sc manage login hyphen l let's take a look I'm just sharing my screen. So here we are. Let's start with the simple uh, SC manage login hyphen L. And this is the mapping. So we have uh, our login name. We, I created a username root and root is mapped to unconfined user because it's not confined there's a corresponding SC Linux user and the category MLS category is S0 S0 uh, S0 and MCS categories multi category security MCS so this is level level is S0 and categories are C02 C1023 all the services this is the mapping what we will do here is we will create a login name and we'll map it to one of the SC Linux users that we will do in this session we'll learn how to do it so role part of SC Linux is the role based access uh, control is security uh, it is a part of SC Linux is the role based access control security model a role is an attribute of RBAC. SC Linux users are authorized for roles and roles are authorized for domains as we have been discussing right from the beginning. The role serves as an intermediary between the domain and SC Linux user. Yes, that is true. The role that can be entered determine which domains can be entered ultimately this control which object type can be accessed and this helps reduce vulnerability to privilege escalation attacks because not every user can enter into every role so we decide role actually uh, the role that can be entered determine which domain can be entered so a user enter into a role a role enter into a domain and thereby perform given operation on the object type a type is an attribute of type enforcement type defines the domain for processes and type for files 
as Linux policy rules define how types can be ex a type can access each other whether it can be a domain accessing a type or domain accessing another domain access is only allowed if specific as Linux policy rule exists that allows it and that is type so we have understood the concept of users concept of role concept of type finally the level the last one level is an attribute of MLS or MCS an MLS range is a pair of levels written in lower level high level if the level differs or low level if the levels are identical like S0 S0 the meaning is uh, the same as S0 because levels are same each level is a sensitivity category pair so first part before the column is sensitivity sensitivity and the second part is category so sensitivity and category because you know that they were separated by colons so which category uh, uh, with categories being optional if there are categories because as I said we have uh, uh, you know sensitivity colon and the category categories are optional we may have simple sensitivity but no category and because categories are optional if there is if there are categories the level is written as sensitivity category set if there are no categories then it is written as only sensitivity if the category set is contiguous series it can be abbreviated for example C0 C3 is same as C0 C1 C2 C3 the ATC SE line is targeted SE trans dot conf map levels to human readable form we need to take a look at that that is interesting part because uh, we define new sensitivity new category if we want to define that here because that that this file becomes important for our configuration etc sc linux targeted sc trans dot conf let's take a look at So vi slash etc slash sc linux slash targeted sc trans dot com file. Take a look at that. Here it is the uh, human readable format. Even though they are commented, you can define your own here. For example, sensitivity s0 category c0 equal to con company confidential. That this way you can define them. C0 C1 patient record. S0 C2 unclassified S0 C3 top secret S0 sensitive S0 C1 C3 company confidential Red Hat this are this is way you can define them you can uncomment and you can define your own so examples the real one the defined actual definitions are this sensitivity S0 meaning is it is system low S0, S0, this is sensitivity, C0, C1023. If you remember, this was assigned to super user. That is root. The super user root was mapped to uh, this sensitivity category pair. So that means system low to system high, means entire range. Sensitivity C0 and category range C0, C1023, system high. So this way, uh, we define our own sensitivity category pair to human readable form in RHEL targeted policy enforces MCS and in MCS there are just one sensitivity that is S0 chcat change file security category change or remove the security category for each file or user like you can specify chcat category file name chcat hyphen l category username chcat 
so there are so many options with this command we can uh, use manual pages to refer to the options specified in this command chcat hyphen d file name chcat hyphen l hyphen d username we'll take a look at some of the examples of chcat after this because examples are to be discussed multi-category security mcs MCS consists of configuring a set of categories which are simply text labels such as company confidentials the way we looked at the file or medical records and then assigning users to those categories now you I'm sure you can correlate that okay the uh, sensitivity category pair is defined in that configuration file and users are mapped to those category sensitivity category pair which means whatever uh, uh, you know policy we decide based on the sensitivity category then that user will have that mapping so they are mapped, they are connected pair that internally these components are connected. The system administrator first configure the category and this is the process starting point. As a system administrator we should first configure the categories, we define them, we define a security, sensitivity and security category. So first we define that pair in the file sctrans.conf file we give it a name the way they were given in the examples and then assign users to them as required the user can then use the labels as they see fit the names of the categories and their meanings are set by the system administrator and then can be set to whatever is required for the specific deployment in other words these two lines are giving you con complete control how you want to control your system by defining the security level confidentiality level assigning those levels to the objects and assigning those objects to roles and assigning those roles to users so it starts from reverse side from the right hand side we define the sensitivity category pair give it a name assign it to a role assign that role to the user a system in a home environment may have only one category of private and can be configured so that only trusted local users are assigned to this category it depends as I said what is the environment you have what are the different layers of security what are the layers of accessibility in your environment and you decide that in a corporate environment categories could be used to identify documents confidential to specific departments like categories in such cases can be finance payroll marketing personal I mean we define as we feel right so we define our own labels and meaningful names we specify them in the file sctrans.con file after users have been assigned to the categories they can label any of their files with any of these categories to which they have been assigned therefore thereby restricting the access to that categories of users for example a home user in the system described above could label all of their personal files as private and no service such as Apache or VSFTP would ever be able to access those files because they don't have access to the private category and that's how you can protect some of your files some of your documents with this category now if you label them correctly of course I'm sure you know how to label the files how to label the directories how to label the objects finally MCS works on a simple principle to access a file user needs to be assigned to all of the categories to which the file is labeled if you don't assign you will not get access so MCS check is applied after normal Linux discretionary access control and type enforcement rule so it can be it can only further restrict the security 
so it is in addition to the DAC because it is a part of MCS multi category security SC Linux and standard Linux user identities we have done that earlier also SC Linux maintains its own user identity for processes separately from Linux user identities in the targeted policy only minimal set of uh, SC Linux user identities exist system user root and user u which you have done system processes root for administrator and user for all user logins SC manage user hyphen L we can see all the SC Linux users so SC manage user hyphen L command to list SC Linux users so let's take a look at this how what all SC Linux users we have in the previous command we we checked SC manage log SC manage logins now we'll see SC manage users SC Linux users so let's take a look so we will take a look at SC manage users user and these are the SC Linux users so here we have guest user prefix is user MCS level is S0 range the sensitivity category pair is S0 only no category assigned and SC Linux role is guest role root staff user sys admin u sys system u unconfined u user u x guest u we discuss these different SC Linux users and they are defined now we can create our own which we will learn SC Linux logins from a type enforcement point of view in targeted policy they are security equivalent to effectively use MCS we need to be able to assign different set of categories to different Linux users even though they are all the same SC Linux user that is user U this is solved by introducing the concept of SC Linux login and this is used during login process to assign MCS categories to SC Linux users when their shell is launched use the SC Linux login hyphen A to assign that is add to assign Linux user to SC Linux user identities for example I want to assign Sang1 to user U so SC Linux login hyphen A hyphen S user U Sang1 and to verify that uh, log out the current session login as Sang1 and verify that SC Linux context with ID underscore ID hyphen Z we'll do this command and we'll take a look at this okay SC manage login hyphen a that is add hyphen s and user underscore u sang1 and now we we'll log in as user sang1 and we'll see ID hyphen Z see the role is now user underscore U by default it was unconfined user like if I use add a user let's exit and let's create a user and see the default one root red hat and I'm just adding a user add user Rahman Pass WD Rahman now let me switch to Rahman ID hyphen Z the default context is unconfined user unconfined role unconfined D this is by default 
now let me exit from here and let's do the same command now sc manage hyphen a hyphen sorry login hyphen a hyphen s user underscore u rahman and now if I switch to Rahman user and see my ID hyphen Z I'll oh, I have to log out I cannot exit from here so I have to log out R A H M A N yeah I have to log out now let's try because switch user is not giving me the contactivity sensitivity Rahman and now I'll see ID hyphen Z this is how it is so we, we switch user will not give the context right context so uh, that means that is important point we need to log out we need to log in again to see the SC Linux context for that user change context to be honest so now we are getting unconfined user unconfined uh, sorry user u user r and user t because we assign that uh, and why we are uh, getting uh, user role and user t because user u has access to user R and user T because that is assigned the mapping is with that role and that context that is the reason we are not getting unconfined role unconfined T because we are mapping to the user itself is mapped now unconfined user was mapped to unconfined role unconfined T but user is user U is mapped to user R that is why entire string has changed entire security context has changed here and that's the point and that makes a lot of sense So this is what we have done, mapping a new user or mapping an existing user to SC Linux user. Okay. Check the SC Linux user assigned to specific SC Linux user identity now. Now if you try SC manage, uh, SC manage login hyphen L, we will see that change. Of course, I forgot, we should have tried that. Because mapping, since we have done the mapping, we should be able to see that mapping now. Let's take a look at that also. We should do it. SC manage login. Now you change uh, hyphen L. You just take a look at that settings which we have done. Look at this. Sang1 user is mapped to user u and Rahman is also mapped to user u now you you see that difference that's how it is mapped Red Hat Enterprise Linux and SC Linux are pre-configured with several default categories but to make effective use of MCS the system administrator typically modify these or create further categories to suit your uh, local requirements configuring categories SC Linux maintains a mapping between internal sensitivity and category levels and their human readable representation in sctrans.conf file which we saw in the beginning you can use a chcat hyphen l command to list the current categories and you remember there are three uncommented lines three or four uncommented lines and we can see those lines with C uh, chcat hyphen uh, under hyphen uppercase l to change or create modify categories you can add an entry into this file the file which we saw in the beginning into this file so uh, let's take a look at the chcat hyphen l also chcat hyphen l and there were three or four uncommented line to my understanding I remember that yeah there were three lines actually yes these three lines were there system low system low system high and system high these were the lines defined in that file Once the categories are added to the system, you can start assigning them to SC Linux users and files. Assume that Sang1 is in marketing department. 
and now you want to add sang1 to marketing department and you want to assign a category to this login so you can use chcat hyphen l hyphen hyphen space plus marketing sang1 let's do this also and we will see and we will verify that uh, to list the category assigned to the users so uh, remember this command we are going to use chcat hyphen l that is for login hyphen hyphen space plus marketing sang1 means we are adding sang1 to this category marketing so we'll take a look at that so chcat hyphen l hyphen hyphen plus marketing sang1 okay because we have not defined it so let's define it let's go to that file and define it because we need to enable that first marketing is not defined so let's define and we define our own range we just need to edit this line marketing and we define its sensitivity uh, uh, let's say s1 and c2 we define we give any sensitivity level and any category so we just this is just a label sensitivity category label and then marketing is the name and now let's try to assign it now marketing m a r k e t i n if we are missing that that means we are let's see the error message uh, invalid mls category marketing no such file or targeting we have not defined it s0 s0 marketing yeah we have not categorized we have not created yet okay we'll see that no problem but once it is defined we have not defined it we have not created marketing and probably our syntax is not correct but once it is done then we will be able to do this we will be able to use this command chcat we may have to restart because we have just added that and we know that sc linux work on the virtual file system we have to relabel or we have to restart something we are we are missing a one another step probably let's take a look at and we'll get to know about it but the command is correct chcat hyphen l hyphen hyphen space plus marketing sang1 so you can also use chcat command to with additional command line argument to list the categories and that uh, the assigned to the users so chcat hyphen l hyphen l sang1 let's try this i have not tried this hyphen l hyphen l sang1 let's see that good we will take a look at this command probably it was assigned but let me see But we were not able to assign this command itself is not working mm -hmm. but let us see first chcat hyphen l hyphen l sang1 let's see by default what it says so by default it is s0 only right okay okay let's continue we'll see that because I'm not able to add uh, sang1 to marketing category which I wanted to
my slide is not moving give a second So chcat hyphen uppercase L hyphen L will give you the newly assigned MCS category multiple category to the user. Assigning categories to files by default all the files on the system will fall under the same category and are therefore accessible by everyone. We now need to assign categories to the various files on the system so that only the appropriate user can access them. For this example, we create a file in Sangwan's home directory by simply creating echo financial record and a finance record.txt. We can use ls-z command to see the context of this file which we created user u object r user home t and the file name is this. Now we can assign category to this file which we have created. To assign category to this newly created file, we can use the command chcat change category hyphen hyphen plus finance and the file name. Now if you see finance records dot txt file you will see the here colon finance finance report dot txt. So the category user defined category has been assigned to this file. You can also assign more than one category to a file like you want to add payroll also to this category. So chcat hyphen hyphen plus payroll finance record dot txt ls hyphen z finance record dot txt now if you see here finance and payroll so two categories are assigned to this file so this way we can assign categories to a file and therefore uh, the corresponding user will be able to access the files based on that now how to verify that each of the categories that have been assigned to the files are displayed in the security context you can add or delete categories to the file as required. Only user assigned to those categories can access the file. Assuming that Linux DAC and TE permissions would also already allow the access. Now, if a user who is assigned to a default category tries to access the file, they will receive this message. Like if you try the user, normal user try to use cat command to display that, then you will get the message permission denied because you have assigned to the so this user to whomsoever that the whomsoever is logged in whomsoever is trying to access must be assigned the same category the way we assign in this slide uh, the category we were talking about here here we are assigning the category like marketing so this user sang one if assigned to marketing and try to access that file will not be allowed if it is assigned to the payroll or that uh, you know that category proper category is assigned to this user so corresponding file and user category must match that is the point so this is how we can assign the category concept multi category security mcs is an additional optional addition to sc linux that allow users to add categories to processes and files this adds the additional constraint to the access check required that the category that the process has must be of the category of the file it is accessing. So they must belong to the same category. The number of categories supported by system is configured by the policy that depends on the policy how many categories are supported. As engineering for example marketing payroll and company nda the file may have multiple categories for example if there are technical report 
but it was under the non disclosure agreement nda the file must have the category is engineering and company nda category name can be configured into this file as i told you as a linux targeted as a trans.com file and which i specified here s0 c0 engineering s0 c1 marketing s0 c1 payroll as you see this is how i defined i remember i defined it this way sensitivity is zero and the categories multiple categories i defined i remember but what i missed i still i am looking for that if i recollect that we need to restart the system or we need to do something else i need to look at but i remember clearly i defined this way i defined the categories this way only i defined my own marketing category this way the s0 portion is required MCS is implemented using S MC uh, SA Linux multi security or multi level security support. The categories on a file can be changed. Oh, okay, MLS support. By default, what we were using is targeted. I got the answer now. By default, we were using a targeted policy. We should use MLS, and the file is the configuration setting is given in that um, config file, etc. SA Linux config. And if you remember, there we have that option. You are using targeted policy or MLS policy. So we should use MLS. That is the point. And now I got it. The category in the file can be changed by using chcat command, chcat command, chcat plus uh, category name, the file name. Similarly, to remove the category minus my uh, that is a hyphen hyphen minus engineering. The minus minus is required. The hyphen hyphen is required to specify that categories being removed are not options uh, for the cat command for the chcat command. So chcat marketing company NDA my profile. Now that the files has correct categories, program should run with categories. R run con. Ah, this also we missed that. We also need to run that. Should be run with categories. Run con. Run context hyphen l. And engineering evolution. This is the file name. So we missed somehow these two three options and the category. The most important, the configuration setting MCS or uh, MLS category should have been used instead of targeted. I'll show you at the end of the slide that what I missed. Multi-category security. This will run the evolution mail program with the engineering category. I'm referring to this slide here discussed. Engineering category program is evolution. Now this instance of evolution will be able to attach files with either no category or the engineering category. It will pre be prevented from accidentally attaching company NDA files in the mail. Since evolution has the engineering category, so therefore which is not su a superset of company NDA, and hence mail will not be you will not be able to send company NDA through the mail. And this way, you are securing company non-disclosure agreement being attached and being sent via mail to anybody. And this is a very good example where we uh, categorized a document and we categorized a program and the program is prevented from accessing anything other than the specified category because that program only support engineering category, right? So that that is very good example of uh, uh, assigning categories to programs and files. That's all for this session. Let's take a look at what I missed and the MCS was not used. I was using M multi category uh, rather than uh, I mean I was using targeted policy and the setting was here. VI slash etc slash SC line X slash config and here the problem is here MLS we were using uh, targeted policy we should have been using mls policy and the corresponding uh, rpm must be installed that was the reason i was not able to create the marketing i was not able to uh, create that and that is something which i was missing that's all for this session i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching